name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. We gather again to pray for the sick, aware that Jesus himself said, For two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Let us listen to the word of God and be reminded of the powerful healing and loving presence of Jesus. We read in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 10 and following. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are free from your affirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed in those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water. Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had kept bound for eighteen long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bind her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, how often can we be bent over in appearance and in mood when faced with our weak nature? When looking at the ground, we can be unaware that you are in our midst. We can miss the beauty around us, the work of your hands. How many times can we lack the, the ability to keep our hearts full of hope, especially when the news of illness rocks our status and distracts us from our faith? Yet you are still close and have the power to heal us from our infirmity. Your grace is abundant without condition. You are ever recreating us anew in your image and likeness. And we are blessed when healing, even unexpected healing, comes our way. How often also can we be like those who question and look to the minutiae of the letter of the law rather than the overall picture? That you came that we should have life and have it to the full. When we lack the eyes of faith, when we are critical and begrudge the goodness of others, help us to experience in you the healing presence and your saving power. May we always be thankful that your generosity knows no bounds, and that expected or unexpected, your love overflows into our lives day and daily, so that we have a lot to be grateful for. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth, and through the work of your hands, healing and strength can come without condition. May we ever rejoice that the work of your hands makes all that you create and recreate good and healthy. Amen. A prayer for the sick. Jesus, you control all the parts of our bodies and you know when they're not working at their best. Sickness leaves us stressed and steals time for all the things we want to be doing. We don't like to be sick, but times like this also make us rest in you. So we thank you for this chance simply to wait on you. 
We come to you today asking for your touch, Lord. Help us to be patient and allow you to do your work. If doctors are involved, give them wisdom. And thank you for providing the help we need, however you choose to provide. Whether this is a test or simply a time to trust, we want our response to honour you. As our Good Shepherd, we know you lead us beside quiet places and restore our souls and bodies. We trust you and want you and want to follow your leading. Help us to welcome this time not as an interruption in our carefully planned schedules, but as an opportunity to draw strength and nourishment for the journey ahead. You are our healer and our great physician. We look to you and give thanks for the promises in your word that assure us of your presence and your help. Teach us what you want us to learn during these unpleasant times, Lord. Help us not to take out our discomfort on those around us and show us how to be a good patient while recovering. In these days of sickness, Lord, we are trusting you and asking you to make us well. And when you have restored us to health, give us wisdom so we can treat our bodies as the temples of your Holy Spirit. We are eager to get back on our feet serving you, but we realize that even in sickness, we can still draw near to you. So thank you for your presence, Lord. Amen. And a prayer for healthy mind and body. Almighty God, you know that we are surrounded by so many great dangers and because of our human frailty, we cannot withstand them. Give us health of mind and body so that we who suffer under sin may overcome and win the victory in you through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, now and forever. Amen. And a prayer for healing power. Father God, many of us need healing. We need healing for past hurts, random physical pains that we allow to waylay our days, and spiritual healing for various reasons. We reach up to you to receive this healing so that we may be whole and that we may be able then to minister to others in a way that brings you the fullness of glory. How wonderful to be able to worship you without stain or blemish and to be totally healed. Show others your healing power so that they may also be healed and walk in wholeness. For we ask this through Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We read then also in the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 and following. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, 
I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. The Gospel of the Lord. The cure of the blind man Bartimaeus has a wealth of treasure to reflect upon, especially for those who have lived with illness for a long time. As well as physical healing, we are in need of mental and spiritual healing, a healing that only can come through trust in a God who saves completely. Sometimes in life we feel stuck, incapable of making a decision, confused. It can often be experienced when we have an illness or a weakness we have had to live with for a long while. Generally, it's because we feel as though we don't see ourselves clearly. We don't see the situation clearly or which way to get out of it. Perhaps that's because things aren't just clear to begin with. But many times it is we who pull the wool over our own eyes. We prefer not to see. It is no accident that when one is depressed, we close the shades and seek refuge in sleep, in the illusion that we can distance ourselves from reality. Sometimes it's the weight of our past that holds us back, because we feel as if we cannot change. We can feel utterly lost, like a bottle of oil shattered on the pavement like the pitiless time that slips through our hands without hope of ever being recovered. Bartimaeus is a little like this, and maybe it's not by chance that the encounter described in this gospel passage happens in Jericho, the city built below sea level, the city that represents the abyss of humanity, our miseries, the places into which we feel sunken, depressed, and especially alone. In fact, Bartimaeus is a lonely man. Sometimes in life we carry around a painful contradiction. We want to be someone, but we find ourselves deeply alone. Bartimaeus is the son of Timaeus. He is one of those who have been called to relationship but instead lives in drama and his paralysis in solitude. We don't know if Bartimaeus chose to set himself apart or if he has, or, or, or if he was set apart by another, but he certainly still longs to be heard. He won't stop begging for someone to stop. Jesus had descended into Jericho to the depths of the abyss, to find the man that felt that he was hopelessly lost. But Bartimaeus wasn't even there. Bartimaeus was outside, outside the city, and even off the road, where he sat by the roadside. Bartimaeus doesn't live within Jesus' paths. He is the last minute man, the man that holds on when everything is slipping out of his hands. He is the last possible cry for help. We carry with us certain resources that sometimes we don't even know we have. They come out at the moment we are most desperate. Bartimaeus is a beggar and he has learned not only to ask, but to cry out. Like so many of us, Bartimaeus begs for just a bit of affection, just a little attention. Jesus is a man that stops when he hears the cries of, of, of he who only wants to be seen, recognised and looked upon with dignity. It's astonishing to see how Bartimaeus revives, that is, how he stands up when Jesus stops before him even before healing his eyes. 
we too can help others to revive if only we would stop to listen to what they are saying. Sometimes we need help to get back on our feet, like Bartimaeus, to throw off that which is holding us down, that which oppresses us, that which blocks our path, even if it seems to be the very thing that protects us, that keeps us warm, that defends us. Bartimaeus throws off his cloak and it makes us wonder if it wasn't that cloak that was keeping him from getting up. For the cloak of a beggar is his most precious possession. It's his home, his blanket, his only wealth. It's not insignificant that the law prohibited taking the beggar's cloak for more than a day, as we hear in the book of Exodus chapter 22. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. Sometimes the things we are most attached to are the very things that are holding us back. Only when Bartimaeus frees himself of his fears does he become aware of the true desires he carries in his heart. In fact, it's only at this point that Jesus asks him what it is that he truly wants. Often we do not necessarily want to know how things truly are. Bartimaeus wants to see again, but the verb anablepen also means to look on high, and to look on high one must also raise one's head. Bartimaeus wants to rediscover his dignity as a man that sees things as they are. Once Bartimaeus has rediscovered his dignity, he is free to do as he pleases. Jesus does not bind, but frees. Jesus even says to Bartimaeus, go your way. He doesn't say, come. And yet Bartimaeus freely chooses to follow Jesus. So we pray for those who have suffered for a long time, even to the point of losing hope and a vision for the future. It is only in an encounter with the living God where hope is restored, where vision is given, where new sight is held out, where we are brought up from the depths of our weaknesses. Even for Bartimaeus, the man that seemed to be hopelessly lost, the man who couldn't even be found in the depths of Jericho, even for him, there is a road to walk. And so a prayer for personal healing. I pray this prayer in the first person, but I ask that you make it your own. God, you know me so well. You created me. You know the number of hairs on my head, and you even know the thoughts conceived in my heart before I even put them to voice. You've told us to come to you and ask for every need of life. You are the God who heals, and you have the final word on my destiny, the number of years I live, and the number of times that I will serve you here on earth. I'm coming to you today as your child, longing to hear from you, and asking for your divine healing. There's so much I don't understand about life, but I do know that with one touch, one word, you can make me whole. Please forgive me of my sins, cleanse me of my unrighteousness, and begin your healing from inside out. I don't always know what your will is, Lord, especially in times like now, when I desperately seek your face. I offer you no promises, no bargains, no deals to exchange for my health. I simply bow my head and my heart before you to tell you the desire of my heart, that I want to spend as many years as I can loving you here, loving others, and wanting to become more like you. However you choose to accomplish that is up to you. 
and okay with me. If you use doctors to provide healing, give them wisdom to know what to do. Regardless of how you accomplish it, the healing you give is always miraculous, and you deserve all the praise. I absolutely believe you have the power to heal. You demonstrated that on earth, and you still heal in miraculous ways today. Even when my faith is weak, you say it is enough, and my love for you is strong. And I know you already hold my heart and life in your hands. It's up to you. If I can bring you more glory through healing, then that's what I ask for. That's what I desire. But if your answer is no, or not now, I know that your grace is sufficient for me. Ultimately, I want your will to be my will. I look forward to spending an eternity with you. But Lord, if you have plans still more for me to do here on this earth, I not only need and want your physical healing, but a thorough deep down cleansing and a strengthening a wholehearted renewal of all that I am. Because all that I am is yours. Use this trial to strengthen me from a what-if faith to a no-matter-what faith. And no matter what, I choose to honour you and give you glory. Amen. And a prayer for those waiting on healing. Father, you can heal us in a heartbeat. We pray for your miraculous healing today. From depression, lifelong disease, sudden failures, addictions, and massive handicaps. We pray for miraculous healing because we know you are as capable of fixing our physicalities as you are to hold the oceans in place as the earth spins around. Through your son's death on the cross, we have the opportunity to be healed spiritually. By believing in Jesus, we are connected straight to you in prayer and presence. Bless our hearts to believe it. Bless us to believe in you beyond our heart's capacity. Strengthen our faith where it is weak and strengthen our resolve to linger in your presence a little longer each day. Take our pain away according to your will in your time. We're not promised a painless life on this earth, but you do want us to live a happy one. Send your spirit to help us to see past our circumstances and onto your calling in our lives. Sickness and injury can't stop God-placed dreams. Fill our hearts with hope as we wait on you to move in our lives and flow out from our hearts. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for those who are bedridden. Lord, we ask your grace and mercy on those that find themselves in a situation where they are unable to get out of bed and function normally due to whatever reason. Father, we pray you would be very gracious to them in their sickness and ask that they may come to know you in a real sense. May they know your presence with them to uphold and sustain them. Give those who care for them the grace and patience to cope with whatever situation they meet without resentment or a careless attitude. And give all those who care for the sick and elderly a love that comes only from you. Sustain each one on their sick beds, and if it is your purpose for their lives, we pray that they may be raised again into restored health and strength. And should they find themselves in a situation where their illness is prolonged or even terminal, we pray that you would heal their inner soul and bind up any brokenness in their hearts. Lord, we know that 
in you we have life and life more abundantly. And so we ask that if there are any for whom we are needing to pray, that they have not accepted the Lord Jesus as their Saviour, that you would send a special someone to tell them the truth, that Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for their sins, so that all who believe in his name might not perish, but may have eternal life. And that he rose again on the third day, conquering death and hell forever, so that we may live with him eternally in bodies that are glorified, and like unto his glorious body, in grace and mercy. In all our prayers, we are mindful that you answer them even in ways we do not know. All that is required is an expectant faith and a trust in your holy will. And so we pray in the words our Saviour has given us, in the prayer which is the pattern for all prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us now and always in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. No matter what you are going through, fear not, God can deliver you. Be assured that we are always there to pray for you. Submit your prayer requests at swprayer.org.